I am very honored to be introducing Janet Tajan today because as a media specialist, I see firsthand how excited my students get about reading her books. Her first book, True Confessions, was adapted into a Disney Channel original movie. And her latest book, My Life as a Joke, which was released this March, is a standalone sequel in the series that began with My Life as a Book. In this series, Derek, the main character, is considered a reluctant reader, but he loves comic books like Calvin and Hobbes, which is something many of my students can relate to. My students also enjoy Derek's witty humor, sense of adventure, and his honest and realistic reactions to school assignments. He doesn't really like school all that much. But what I think initially draws my students in, especially the reluctant readers, are Derek's cartoon illustrations of vocabulary which are engaging and entertaining. Once a student opens the book and sees the creative, stick-like illustrations on every page, which are created by Janet's son, Jake, they are curious about Derek and want to read more. Then they realize there's more to Derek than his artistic ability. He deals with interesting problems and challenges that will appeal to adults as well, such as a murder mystery in my life as a book, bullying in my life as a cartoon, and most recently in my life as a joke, Derek faces mishaps as a community volunteer. Janet Tajian lives in Los Angeles with her son and husband, and she's currently working on a sequel and to Einstein, the class hamster, which is due out in August. Please join me in welcoming Janet Tajian. Thank you so much. Has everyone been enjoying the festival so far? Has this been a great day? Yes, I'm here all the way from Los Angeles, and I came here to kind of demystify what it's like to be a writer. Um, when my friend Lori Keller gave her presentation today, she talked about how when she was growing up, we didn't have authors come and do school visits. And that's so true. Now we have librarians and teachers and media specialists who put writers in front of kids. But back then, I didn't really know you could actually have a job making up stories for a living. So I'm going to tell you some of the secrets of being a novelist to see that it's really not that big of a mystery and something that you can do too. I've written 13 books, early chapter books, middle grade books, young adult books. Um, my first novel, True Confessions, I wrote when I was getting my master's at Emerson College. And on the very first day of school, I saw this guy standing in the hall, and he looked really funny and really sarcastic. And I said, whatever this guy is teaching, I'm going to take his class. And that guy was Jack Gantos, who won the Newbery Award a few years ago. Have any of you ever read Joey Pigs a Swallow the Key or Rotten Ralph? Jack's written really great books for kids, and I wrote my first book in his class. Now I do book signings all around the country with my teenage son who illustrates two of my series. But when my first book came out, it was an adorable little baby sitting on my lap. Do you hate it when your parents do that? Do you hate it when they embarrass you like that? It was um, a Disney TV movie with Shia LaBeouf and uh, Clara Bryant. It still is on TV all the time, which is great. I wrote a book with the super fabulous Lori Keller doing illustrations called Marty Fry, Private Eye. Lori does amazing books like The Scrambled States of America and Arnie the Donut. I wrote a book called Multiple Choice, which is about a girl who wants to just be perfect in front of her friends and not make any mistakes. And we all know how that turns out. I wrote a book called The Gospel According to Larry and Fault Line, which are young adult books. When I wrote The Gospel According to Larry, I wrote it as a standalone book and put it out into the world, started writing something else. But I always listened to my readers. And I was getting 500 emails a day from kids all around the world saying, we need a sequel. We need to know what happens next. My readers are a billion times smarter than I am, so I wrote two sequels. Any music nerds here? Anyone? <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm so glad. I'm so glad. My editor asked me if I could write a book about rock and roll. I said, absolutely. So I wrote a book about a 14-year-old set in Laurel Canyon, 1971. He's obsessed with music. People always say to me, you must have done so much research for that book. I said, sadly, no. It was mostly all up here. But it's a book, book that I'm very proud of. So then I was thinking, what do I write about next? Something was happening at my son's school. Was it a vampire attack? Was it a werewolf? Was it monsters? No. It was reading getting harder. And as a writer and as a mom, this was something I had to look at because Jake and his friends had always loved reading. How many of you like to read Calvin and Hobbes? How many of you like Garfield? Jake and his friends would read those for hours and hours. Why were they freaking out when chapter books got a, you know, a little harder? Now, if you look at Calvin and Hobbes, Calvin's supposed to be in first grade. Look at this vocabulary. Visceral, convey, progressing, abstraction, monochromatic. Why were the kids sitting for hours reading this? and complaining about chapter books. Are you ready for my first writing secret? Are you? Are you? OK. I start all of my books by asking the question, what if? That is how I start every book. It's how my, most writers start every book. I just was watching Lois Lowry on YouTube talking about The Giver and the movie of The Giver and talking about it all started with what if. That's the question that starts all our books. What if uh, the new babysitter was an alien? What if the kid who's been beating me up since second grade moved in next door? What if, what if? So I said, what if I could write a novel that felt like Calvin and Hobbes? Would it be possible? It would have to have humor, and it would have to have visual support. It would have to have some kind of pictures, right? So when I thought about humor, I thought about my son and his friends. They're goofballs, like all kids are goofballs in a very good way. I say that being one myself. So here's secret number two. How many of you know how to be spies? How many of you know how to overhear conversations in coffee shops? How many of you know how to overhear conversations in the hallway at school? Yes, we all do. How many of you know how to make stuff up? Do you know how to make stuff up? Yes, the dog ate my homework, yes. That's basically a novelist's job. You're making stuff up or you're stealing from real life. I'm going to give you some scenes from the My Life Has books, and you can raise your hands and guess if I made them up or stole them from real life. There's a scene where Derek draws Sharpie sideburns on his sleeping dad. Raise your hands if you think I made that up. Raise your hands if you think I stole that from real life. Wow, you guys think my son is evil. I completely made that up. Now, there's another scene where Derek and his friends are in a DVD store, and the gate starts coming down in the mall when the store is closing, and at the very last second, they slide under it like James Bond. Raise your hand if you think I made that up. Raise your hand if you think I stole that from real life. I stole that from real life. That was my son and his friend Sam doing that at a video store. And the good thing about having uh, a mom who's a writer is, instead of yelling at him, I just said, stealing it, stealing it. Uh, there's one scene where Derek and his friends draw grids on avocados and have a hand grenade fight in the driveway. Raise your hand if you think I made that up. Raise your hand if you think I stole that from real life. I made that up. See how sometimes you can't tell if you use good details, you can't tell if it happened or not. Now, my son is an expert in visual support because he's a visual learner. How many of you think it's easier to learn things when you can see a picture? Yes, a lot of people are visual learners. He's been drawing pictures since he was little. When he was in elementary school, he drew his vocabulary words on index cards. He used to write the words on the back and uh, put the definition. So I have boxes and boxes and boxes of his vocabulary words. That's August. This is military. 
everyone, royalty, whenever. So I wrote the first few chapters of what would become my life as a book, and I had Jake do the illustrations in the margin, gave it to my editor, my longtime editor, and she said, this is so great. You hired a professional cartoonist to illustrate the book. And because I'm evil, I didn't tell her till after I signed the book contract that it was my then 14-year-old son. So these are some of the drawings. This is a guy with an anvil on his foot. This is the illustration for excruciating. That pain is excruciating. This is the illustration for cockamamie, which means crazy. That's a cockamamie idea. This guy is getting whisked off the stage. This is the illustration for slobbering. And this is the illustration for flabbergasted, which means really, really surprised. Now, how many of you like to watch cartoons? How many of you like Looney Tunes cartoons? Jake was someone when he was two years old could tell the difference from a Tex Avery and a Chuck Jones cartoon. He is someone with a deep cartoon knowledge, so the drawings in the book are very, very cartoony. Yay, we're done. So just like when you write a report for school or do a big project for school, you hand it in. But are you done? No, because you get it back, right? You get it back all marked up from your teacher. I get back, and so does Lori, um, our manuscript backed, all written up with all notes from the editor of all the things that need to get changed. So if you remember one important thing from our time together today, besides the fact that my books are hilarious and awesome, it's that writing is rewriting. It's, they should call us rewriters instead of writers because that's like 99% of the job. Here's another writing secret. Who here knows how to make mistakes? Can you make mistakes? I can make mistakes. I really can make mistakes. Making mistakes doesn't make you a loser. It lets you make the work get better. I took these out of my trash can. I do this for a living. What draft do you think this is of one of my books? Yes. Wow. You are very close. It's like my 17th draft of a book. And it seems like, like the kids say, oh, that's like your second draft. No, I go through it over and over again. And I'm not the only one. Jake has all the illustrations back from our editor with all the notes. This is his illustration for the word rabies. Do you want to see the first draft? It's like an elephant who needs a shave. <laughs> First of all, elephants don't even get rabies. Why is he drawing an elephant? So also, uh, time and time again, we have to go over things. Yay, we're finally done. My Life is a Book came out. Our editor wants a sequel. What question do I ask myself that I start every book with? What if? What if you were skateboarding with your friends and a stunt coordinator from the movie came over and asked if you wanted to do stunts in the new teen movie, would you say yes? Yes, Derek did say yes. So I get to work and while I'm writing the book, Jake is doing another really important thing that writers and illustrators have to do. He's refueling. Do you guys like to eat? Yeah? My son loves to eat all the time. So while I'm writing a 200 page book, this is what he's doing. Short rib sandwich, toasted marshmallow shake, lobster roll, BLT, hamburger. Okay, if you think there's nothing better than a cupcake truck, which is pretty high up on the list of perfect things, I'll tell you what we have in Los Angeles, a cupcake ATM. 24 hours. Run the card, a little perfectly baked cupcake in a box. It's kind of great. Fruit salad after the cupcake, no, whatever the piece of meat that is. So then he starts drawing the pictures after he's all done. This is the illustration for candidate. Disbelief, I'm seeing a UFO, I'm in disbelief. 
This is one of my favorites ever. Um, and this is where we can talk about synonyms. Who knows what a synonym is? Yes. Words that mean the same. So this is, this guy has a party and a party hat and food and streamers and nobody came. His party was a disaster. His party was a calamity. His party was a catastrophe. His party was a flop. His party was a fiasco. And Jake didn't know that word before he drew it. But then after he drew it, now it's a word that he knows and a word now that you know. You'll see that word in a book and you'll know what it is. This waiter is recommending a dessert. These guys are alternating left, right, left, right. Before that book comes out, we get another letter with all the things that have to get changed. And then My Life is a Stunt Boy came out. What question do I ask myself? What if? What if everything was going great for you? You had a cartoon club and uh, your friends were, you know, skateboarding and surfing and you had a pet monkey. Does it get any better than that? And then a kid, a new kid transfers into your class and decides he likes everyone else except you. And that's My Life as a Cartoonist. Now, in this book, Jake also had to do cartoon panels. How many of you like to draw comic strips, comic panels, doodles in your margin? Yes. Jake loves to do that, too. Now, I'm going to have you guess some of these words. This is a guy throwing a wrench into the machinery. He's a spy. He's wetting the machine. He's wetting the machine. This is a hard word, yes. It's a word that means jamming. Yes. No, that's a great guess. What else? Something spies do, yes. D it, disable is a great guess. It, 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 that is a synonym for this. He's wrecking it, he's jamming it. That you are almost there. It's 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 very close to espionage. He's he's sabotaging. Thanks, Dad. He's sabotaging the machine. This cat is wetting on this mouse. Yes. Pouncing. This car is what? Yes. Swerving, you guys are good with your vocabulary. In my next book, I said, what if every time you tried to act like a very cool 12-year-old, you ended up acting like a giant baby and falling flat on your face like a loser? And that is my life as a joke. Here is a really important thing that writers and artists have to do. You have to make choices. You have to make choices. When Jake draws a vocabulary word, he has a million choices of how to draw each picture. And as the writer, I have a million choices too. Here, I'm going to have you put your writing hats. Can you guys put your writing hats on? You can't leave yet because you have to put your writing hats on. Put your writing hats on, and I want you to help me make this decision. If you were writing a book, called My Life as a Gamer. I had lots of decisions to make, but one of them was, do I have Derek be obsessed with a real video game, like Minecraft or whatever, or do I make up my own video game? Put your writer's hat on. Raise your hand if you would use an existing video game. Raise your hand if you would make up your own video game. That's what I did. I made up a game called Arctic Ninja with lots of cool things and narwhals and killer snowmen and all kinds of fun stuff. Here's another question. You still have your writer's hat on? I'm going to show you how many decisions you can make. And none is right and none is wrong. It's just all a question of choice. How many of you here are the choices would write a book called my life as an alien, or how many of you would write my life as an athlete? 
Raise your hand if you would do my life as an alien. Raise your hand if you would do my life as an athlete. See how there's no wrong choices? Everyone makes different choices. That's why when you go to the bookstore, there's so many different and cool books. Now, our books are in like 25 different languages all around the world. We get letters every week from kids all around the world. And here is why I'm telling you that. This series started as a way for my son who has a reading disability to be able to process and learn his vocabulary words and a way to teach himself to read. So by doing that, sometimes when you do something to help yourself or sometimes when you're not good at something and you really have to study to get good at it, you end up really good at it and end up helping other people. So it makes me so proud that my son, who had a hard time reading, is now helping kids visualize pictures in their head all around the world. Makes me so happy. My editor asked us for a new series. What question do I ask myself? What if? What if the class hamster was the smartest kid in the class? What if he came from a long line of class hamsters who had been paying attention and taking notes and he knew all the answers to the questions, and he was raising his little hamster hand, but no one could hear him. And that's Einstein the class hamster. Now this started with a comic strip that my son did in sixth grade. I homeschooled him that year, and I said, you have to do something every day. How many of you have something that you like to do every day, like drawing, or playing soccer, or meditating, or running, or playing piano. To get really good at something, you have to practice every day. What do you practice every day? Drawing? Good, good for you. What about you? Reading. Reading's a great thing to practice. So my son did uh, a comic strip about a, a hamster and kind of a sarcastic hamster. And again, I said, maybe we can steal that. What if he's a class hamster? How can we make it funnier? And we started working on it together. Now, how many of you think you might like to go into animation? Do any of you think about going into cartoons or animation? Yeah. Well, in, in books and animation, there's a thing called character design. Character design, like Lori talked about with the donut, you need to make it the same every time. You can't, when you watch The Simpsons, you don't have Bart Simpson seven feet tall in one scene and short in another scene. When you write a book or a, a cartoon or draw a cartoon, you have to have the characters be the same. So Jake had to create characters and do model sheets do you want to see what these characters look like in their first draft? Yes? They're scary. You sure? This is Bonnie with her crooked legs and moon booties and bad hair. This is the first draft of Einstein, who looks like a hairy potato. And Ned with like his flat face and giant hand and whatever that thing is on the top of his head. This is what happens when you let me illustrate. I stick googly eyes on things. This is why no one thus far has had me illustrate a book. This is Miss Marino, his, the teacher in the class who stays up all night watching infomercials so she falls asleep all day. This is what she looked like in the first draft. Again, her legs are crooked and her glasses are not good and her hands are like little balls but he just went over it again and again and again. Every book needs an antagonist. Raise your hand if you know what an antagonist is. What? An evil person, the villain, the bad guy. And I think in this picture he has the class turtle in his uh, throat. This is Twinkles the Python. This was the first draft of him. Now, do, I don't, do we have audio here, do you know? Are we, let me see if I can get audio on here. 
Let's see. Is that? Oh, no, it didn't do it. Well, there is, if you go to my website, which has so much information on, on all of the books and reading and writing and cartoons, there is a trailer that my son made in iMovie um, that is really, really funny. And one of our friends wrote an Einstein theme song. And if you heard of a cartoon, I forget what the name of it is. It's about a sponge. I, I keep forgetting. SpongeBob SquarePants. Our friend wrote the, the, writes the songs for SpongeBob. Do you know Where's Gary and Best Day Ever? Those are awesome songs. My friend Andy wrote those. So go on the website and see the awesome Einstein trailer. Now here's another writing and illustrating secret. You have to make sure you're having fun. If I was writing a book and I, it was drudgery and I'm like, oh God, I have to write that scene when they're eating dinner, rah, rah, rah. Do you think you'd ha be having fun reading that scene? No, I have to have fun when I'm writing it for you to have fun when you're reading it. So I put in Einstein some tasty tidbits, some fun facts. How many of you like fun facts? Yes. I'm going to give you one of the fun facts from the book. This is a hard one. Who can name me two state capitals that rhyme? Two state capitals that rhyme. Parents can do this too. And teachers. What? Boston and Austin, yes. And that's the kind of thing that makes doing research so much fun for me is finding cool stuff like that. I'm going to give you another one. Making research fun. What's the most dangerous animal on the planet? Raise your hand and take a guess. Yes. Scorpion. What? No, hippo. Dr Komodo dragon. Bug. Did you say bug? It is a bug. Tell me what bug, though. Tell me what bug. No. Mosquito. Who can tell me why? The mos Yes. They suck blood, but what else? What disease? I'm not going to let you get away with these general answers. What disease? Malaria. Yes, dude. So this is the kind of thing I thought, like you, the most dangerous animal in the world was maybe a hippo or a scorpion or a snake or a whale, but it's a mosquito. I love finding out that cool stuff. Should I, do you want one more? Should I give you one more from the new book? What's the only food that humans eat that is made from an insect? Honey? Yes, honey, good first guess, awesome. So that's why I always tell kids when they say, oh, I don't want to do research or I have to do research for a project, make it fun for you. Find the cool things for you. Secret number nine, use your imagination to try new things. Einstein's the first book to have bloopers and deleted scenes only because my out-of-the-box son said, how come DVDs, uh, you know, always have bloopers and deleted scenes and books don't? Can I illustrate the scenes that you forgot to write? Um, yes, I love that idea. So these are some of the bloopers from the book. And then Einstein, uh, the second one, comes out in September. And Einstein Saves the Library comes out next year. This part I want to, wait, I think we've got a Lori Keller slide. I also want to tell kids that teachers are really important too. I learn a lot from books and I learn a lot from teachers. This is me with my ninth grade teacher, English teacher. This is Jake at the Watertown Public Library. I was telling someone yesterday, someone asked him recently, we do a lot of school visits, and someone said, who are your biggest influences? And I was expecting him to say, oh, Tex Avery or Bill Watterson, Calvin and Hobbes. And he said, oh, there was this guy called Fred Grandinetti who was a volunteer at the Watertown Public Library who taught a cartooning class that Jake took when he was like five years old. 
So I tell kids all the time, wherever you can take drawing classes, you know, uh, online or your local library or school, he, Jake now has two series with Macmillan and started in the Watertown Public Library. Now you can use these tips to create your own projects. Do you guys know how to ask what if? Do you know how to make mistakes? Do you know how to be spies? Do you know how to make stuff up? All of these things that I do every day to write novels are things that you already do. It's not even that hard. But wait, there's more. Kids always want to know what if I want to be a writer or an illustrator. Number one, as we said, you need to practice every day. You need to do something every day to get good at it. And you need to get good at taking feedback. When our letters come from our editor and all the pictures and the words are marked up, um, you have to get good at, and have a tough skin and take the feedback. Find other kids who like to write or draw. F start a cartoon club like Derek in My Life is a Cartoonist. And most important, don't give up. Now, I always, as we said before, I never had um, authors come to our school or whatever, and now kids are so lucky. You get to meet so many writers at a festival like this. So who's got some questions about writing or illustrating or whatever that I can uh, answer for you before we go? There must be questions, yes. Of course I'm going to sign your book. I'm going to sign your book as soon as we're done. Absolutely. Who has any questions about writing or rewriting? Yes? Are you going to be Nikki Padno, the other writer Grand Panama? I am. I'm going to be doing. You are? Yeah. So, I'm, so you got any ideas for me? Whenever I do book signings, I always take kids' ideas. So make sure you tell me your ideas for your for what you think I should do for my life as a book. Yes? You don't know how to remember them? But you said you're drawing every day, right? Don't you like to draw? Oh, it's the spelling that's hard for you. The spelling is hard? Spelling can be hard, yeah. It ca it's hard for a lot of kids. Is there a way you can use the drawings to help you with that? Is there a way you could draw something where the letters are in the pictures? Like if the characters are like juggling the letters or something, is there a way you can embed the letters in the pictures? I know my son's done that before too, you know? Yeah, spelling can, can, spelling can be difficult. Who else has a question? Yes. Um, you forgot? You forgot? Okay, yes. Okay, yes. After my life is a gamer, what will be the next ones? I don't know. What do you think it should be? You don't know? What do you think? I like the Olympian. As an uh, Olympian? My life is an Olympian? I like it. What else? You remembered your question. Okay. How long would it take to write a normal picture book? It takes my son a few months to do the pictures for my books, but in a picture book, um, some people spend, you know, six months, some sp people spend a year. It depends on, on the detail of how detailed, uh, how long do you spend doing picture books? Yeah, yeah, it depends. And everyone needs to get their own process because some people draw really fast sketches, like George today was talking about drawing when he does the uh, Olympiads books. He does really fast sketches. Other people are really slow and meticulous. So it's important to learn what your style is. Everyone has different styles. Yes? How come there's only cupcake ATMs in Los Angeles? There actually is now one in New York. So there's one in New York and LA, but I gotta tell you, they're dangerous to have near your house. 
It's dangerous to have a 24-hour cupcake ATM near your house. It's true. Any other questions on, on uh, writing or drawing? Yes. Tell me. My life as an amusement worker. I have to tell you, I have heard a lot of titles, and I have not heard amusement worker. I like it. I like an amusement park setting. That works for me. It's very good, very visual. Yes. What's the third Einstein? The third Einstein is Einstein saves the library. And uh, it's the, that the library is losing funding, which is, of course, horrible. So Einstein has to save the library. Um, do you want me to tell you a fun fact from that book? OK. Who knows what a marsupial is? Yes. Yeah. Animals that what? Not just live in Australia. They have what? They have pouches. What's a baby kangaroo called who lives in a pouch? Yes? A joey. A joey. OK. Now, here's something I never stopped to think about before, but this is what happens when you try to find cool things doing research. Do you know that when the joeys are in the pouch, they poop in the pouch? In, the, in mom's pouch, that they're in there and they're pooping? So th I thought that was kind of gross, and then I was saying, well, I wonder how that gets cleaned. Did you, would you believe me if I tell you the kangaroos lick the pouch? It's true. And this is why I love, this is why I love doing research, because I learned something I didn't know about kangaroos. Now, I guess kangaroos must really love their babies, don't you think? I think that's above and beyond. I think that's way above and beyond. But that's why I love doing research, because you get to find out all that cool stuff. So that's one of the fun, cool fun facts in Einstein 3. Yes. Do I, did I get a hamster for inspiration? No. But I want you to know that after watching Hamster on a Piano on YouTube, how many of you have seen Hamster on a Piano? Oh, well, you must see that, yes. And then what was the other one? The hamster eating the burrito. Did you see that one? There are so many amazing little hamster videos on YouTube that I am thinking, you know, I'm, get, I'm seeing the attraction of hamsters. Absolutely. Do you have one? No. Maybe we both should think about getting one. Yes. I like my life as a writer. And I also like the last one in the series ending as my life as a reader. I like that too, that Derek goes from someone who has a hard time reading, who hates to read, to maybe being a reader. So I like that too. Yes? Yes, combine the two books. I like it. Yes. When you ask a writer which is their favorite books, it's like asking a mom who their favorite kid is. So it's really a hard question. I love My Life is a Book because I got to do it with my son. I love Einstein because it's demented. I love True Confessions because it's my first. I love The Gospel According to Larry because I tried to do something difficult and I feel like I achieved it. So I love all my books for different reasons. That's a good question. Yes? What was it like working with my son? I have to say, it was really surprising because you know how you have no idea when your kid gets a job, like they go work at Starbucks or Kmart or whatever, and you see them working like without you, and you're like, oh, th here they are in the world without me. And seeing how professional and meticulous he was with the drawings and numbering them and keeping them in order and taking it so seriously and never missing a deadline, it was really cool for me to see you know, him taking it seriously. So, so that was really great. And then we brainstormed together always in the car and around the house. And so a lot of the really funny ideas are his, absolutely. Yes. He right now just called me as I was going on stage. He is back uh, in LA. And he's probably doing something like surfing. 
Probably. That would be my guess where he is today. Any other questions? I am, thank you so much. Can you give yourself a round of applause for coming out on a sunny Saturday and talking about books? You guys are awesome. Meet me down there. I am happy to take pictures, sign books, do anything. It's so, so wonderful to be here. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.